All right, what's up? Tim Sykes here. Uh, sorry I didn't get to do a video lesson on Friday. It was a little bit of a crazy day for me. Um, I was up in Boston actually with my dad. Uh, I got him an early Father's Day present uh, where he was going to throw out the first pitch on the Red Sox game. I still have to post that video. I'm sorry I'm behind on everything, but check this out. The Red Sox, big props to them for helping me create what I think is the perfect Father's Day gift because um, my dad didn't just throw out the first pitch. He also had a very special catcher. Um, so watch this video that, that I took. There's my mom. Here's your boy. He's going to catch for you. So that's pretty sweet. So that's Big Poppy, uh, perhaps one of the greatest uh, Red Sox players, definitely my dad's favorite player, and we got Big Poppy to be the catcher. Um, so I'll post a video of him throwing out the first pitch uh, later when I still, I'm still catching up on so many emails, just going away literally for one day. Um, and this was Thursday night. Friday, um, I actually had meetings back in New York, so I actually had to um, – come back down to New York. I, I went from New York on Wednesday to Boston on Thursday, back to New York on Friday. Um, we did a little family road trip up to Boston on uh, Thursday. And then Friday, uh, we're, we're all over the place. My, my mom went back to Miami. Uh, my dad went to Connecticut. And I took the uh, Excel Express back to New York so that I could actually have internet access uh, for three hours. So that was my Friday. And I just want you to understand that to put everything that comes next into perspective. Um, so my Excel Express train got in uh, to uh, Penn Station at around 3 p.m. My whole goal was to get in as quickly as possible so that I could possibly make uh, a trade at the end of the day. Um, in the morning, I actually had made a, a very good trade. Before we even get to the afternoon trade, let me talk about the morning trade. Uh, and that was MGT. So I want to talk about MGT because, you know, this is the, obviously the most volatile, um, biggest winning uh, penny stock right now. It takes the place of SYNC, which was the big winner recently, and PRGN, which was the big winner recently before that. So tons of hot plays right now. Um, me and a lot of other people are not so uh, keen on this company. You know, you have this new CEO, uh, John McAfee, and, you know, obviously he created a great, well-known company in the past, but he's also kind of lost his mind. And, you know, if you Google him and see some of his videos, you can see that. Um, <laughs> there's a reason why he hasn't been on Wall Street for several years. Uh, he's kind of like an older Martin Shkreli. Uh, if you remember KBIO, these characters come out of the woodwork and it sounds all great and good, but then, you know, details start to come to light and guess what? You know, this company and this project probably will fail. Do I know that for a fact? No. Do I have inside information? No. If something is sketchy, you just have learned over time, or at least I've learned over time that it's probably going to be sketchy in the future. So I've been looking to short this each of the past few days, um, thinking that, you know, a big panic was happening. We had a nice little morning panic on uh, Thursday, and then the squeeze, I actually lost a little bit, um, and then a nice morning panic on Friday. And we got a nice double bottom in here at 115, 120-ish. Um, I actually took quite nice advantage of uh, this, this morning panic, shorting it. E-Trade had shares to short made a few hundred bucks, made up for these losses. This this will end badly. Um, but at the same time, you know, Fridays are the most dangerous day to short. So I covered, I was also traveling, so I don't mind playing it safe. But just beware, those of you who are long, um, you know, when the CEO, and now he's, he's tweeting like, oh, we've got the number one stock, like very, very sketchy stuff. CEOs should not be tweeting stuff like that, real CEOs. So I'll continue to look at this as a potential short, but I hope it goes up. You know, I don't like shorting $1 stocks. It's scary. Um, so this was the morning play. Then after, uh, you know, my, my train ride, um, it took me like a half hour to get to my hotel. I barely got in. I think I got my, my laptop up and working like around like 3.40 p.m. 
Um, and at this point, GSAT was a big breakout. And those of you who are my, you know, subscribers or students from many years ago, we know that GSAT was a very cool supernova um, back here in 2013, 2014, where it went from 40 cents to $4 a share. So I like buying former supernovas. Uh, stocks have, you know, kind of like this muscle memory where you can, you know, kind of see that it's going to come back again if it has the right news, if it has the right price action. So while I was on a train or, you know, just getting to Penn Station, the news came out right in here um, at around, uh, well, it, was, it, it spiked and then the news came out right here during the halt. Uh, and the news was this. Um, where is it? I have it somewhere. Uh, this was briefing.com, and they said 3:11 p.m. Global Star informed by the FTC um, that they're, you know, they're they're basically looking at authorizing their uh, satellite internet plan. And GSAT has been waiting for this for so long. Um, I found this article over the weekend. Where was it? Right here. Um, and this was Friday night, so this wasn't this wasn't published yet. Um, but you know, and it's actually the FCC, not the FTC briefing.com. <laughs> they kind of suck. It's not the FTC FCC. And also I should mention that stocks to trade had the news, um, right here at three ten PM. So we beat briefing.com, uh, by a minute, you know, the stock was halted. It doesn't matter. I wasn't even around for it, but nice to know that, you know, not everything is geared towards low price uh, news, low price stocks news, stocks to trade specifically is. Um, so you're going to see this again and again. This is why I really love stocks to trade. Um, but anyways, you know, this, this news came out and the stock spiked and I wasn't even around to do anything. Uh, if I had been, I probably still would have been too scared at, you know, three, three thirty PM. I like buying or shorting near the market close because then you have the safety of the market close. You know, I don't want to buy right here at, at 260 trying to hold it overnight and then it comes down to 230 and guess what? I'm going to have to cut losses because, you know, I'm not going to risk losing freaking 10% plus. Um, that said, I do think that the news is interesting and I'll tell you why. So in my alert, uh, where was it? So this was my morning trade. I made uh, just, you know, remember, I'm trading with such a small account this year. Uh, I made like 200 bucks on MGT. Just so that you know, some people think, oh, you're, you know, you're, you're using your subscribers to make money. I lose money if I make 220 on a trade. Trading with such a small account, it costs me more to send out text messages. I don't trade in order to make trading profits. I trade in order to teach every single trade, good or bad, is a lesson for you guys to see what I did right or what I did wrong. On this one, you know, I did a good job recognizing that MGT had its first red day and or potential first red day, first red morning. So I shorted a little. I also was very, you know, conscientious of my travel schedule. So whenever you're trading, you have to know, are you going to be available all day? Are you going to be, you know, going from city to city in the middle of the day? So I shorted a very small amount. E-Trade had a thousand shares and I got the morning panic and I covered. This was a good trade. And in case you ever think like, oh, he's trying to make $200. That is never my goal. But I do like showing you how to grow a small account. If I'm holding the stock for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes or two hours, it's all to try and protect my small ass motherfucking account. My $12,000 account, which I started the year, is now roughly $42,000. So playing it safe, playing it cautiously, I know it's not fun. I know it's not fun to watch. But that is what I do when I have a small account and I grow it. A few hundred here, a few hundred there. Sometimes I'm wrong, but that's the strategy. With GSAT, so I'm getting in, you know, right around 3.40 p.m. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. So it had already made uh, this low right, right in here at 2.27. So it started bouncing before I can even really uh, buy it on the, on the big dip here. But now you have specific risk management. So I actually wanted to make this poll. Um, I was going to create a free poll because I'm, I, I, you know, I got to create a new guy that, that really talks about 
how to set goals and, and how to manage risk, not just about finding the hottest stocks, not just about patterns. So um, would you like a new guide overviewing risk management, goal setting, and probability odds on trades? I know that's not a cool thing. I'll put this poll at the uh, at the in the the blog post that this video will be in. But I think I'm making this new guide talking about all this unsexy kind of stuff. But it's important because when I was buying GSAT, so first of all, I'm buying GSAT because it has this news of a potential FTC license, which this company has been waiting for for years. Even though uh, the the New York Post got the the FCC wrong. Uh, and it's actually FTC, just to make fun of how like journalism works. Um, they did get this right, uh, where they said, you know, they're still short sellers. They're they're saying approval doesn't mean cash flow. Um, blah blah blah. Global Star's billionaire owner who touted the approval, um, or maybe it is the FCC. I don't I don't even know. No, it is FCC. Oh, Briefing.com got the the FTC thing wrong. My bad. Um, but you know. They have been waiting since 2013. So since that run up from 40 cents to $4, they have been waiting for FCC approval. So I know that and I remembered that, you know, I didn't know the exact dates. I just remember that, you know, this stock had run up 10 times in the past and they've been waiting on news ever since. So with this speculative news that, you know, it's on the docket for the FCC to, to make, you know, uh, uh, some kind of announcement, whether it's good or bad. Just the fact that it's on that docket means that something is moving forward for the first time in three years. So this is huge, huge news. This is an obvious buy catalyst. I know some people were shorting. They are idiots. They are not millionaires. They do not show all of their trades publicly. And frankly, I'm just ashamed for them. Um, I can be wrong a lot of the time, but I would never, never short a former supernova with, you know, multi-year breaking news like this. And I'm not saying that GSAT will definitely get it. I'm saying that just the fact that they got this announcement is a huge step forward, okay? And this is another thing that, that the New York Post got right. Where was it in this article? Uh... Let's see, ah, the company is one of the most shorted on the New York Stock Exchange as hedge funds have made bets that the spectrum was far from valuable. So this is the beauty of GSAT. So you have this former runner, this former supernova that has this potentially positive news and you can see the stock spiked in reaction to the news. So yes, the, the news is positive. It's a multi-billion dollar company so I'm not really comfortable trading it. Um, I bought the stock at 242, by the way, two dollars and forty two cents. After hours it's up to two eighty. Just for those of you who don't know. But let's go. Here's how I find this. Key statistics on the left hand side as I talk about in DVDs that too many of you guys haven't watched. And guess what? Fifty-three million shares up from fifty-one million shares are short. So 53 million shares are betting that this company will fail. Even if they eventually do, even if they eventually don't get FCC approval, the risk, the risk, the potential for pain that these short sellers, these 50 million plus short sellers might have is what drives the stock. And that is why I bought. So my buying it here at 240, you know, and the thing is, is so liquid. I mean, it traded, what, 15 million shares. And I bought uh, 2,000 shares. It's funny. Some people are like, oh, you pumped this stock. You pumped it with your 2,000 shares and all your subscribers who usually buy like 500 shares because they're so broke. Like, it's so ridiculous, the lies that come out of people's mouths. This stock is one of the most actively traded stocks. I bought such a puny position. My subscribers are almost entirely broke or have a few thousand dollars to their name. And I specifically say, do not piggyback my alerts. And yet you have other chat rooms where people are trading with seven and eight figure accounts. 
I, I, sorry, I rant, but I did not pump this stock. I want to show you when a good time to buy is. Former supernova, positive news, lots of shorts, and a set risk. I'm buying this thing at 240-ish, basically just because I'm, I'm getting into my hotel room then. Otherwise, I probably would have been in somewhere on this dip. But now I have a solid low here at like 225 or 230-ish. So my buying it at 240, if somehow before the end of the close or even after hours or, you know, pre-market on Monday, it goes below 230 or 225, I cut losses quickly. That is rule number one. So I have the potential risk of losing 5, 10 cents a share. My potential gain, I did not know it was going to go to $3 a share. My potential gain is that it could retest the highs here of 265 and break out. So my goal was, I don't even remember what I typed because it was so quick. I was just trying to get it out, get out the, um, you know, the alert before the market closed. Uh, goal is to make 25 to 50 cents a share. Cool. So that's what I said basically because I'm buying it at 240-ish and if it somehow tops here at 265, okay, that's a 25 cent a share profit. That's how I get, you know, my target. I look for the former high and I'm not saying that it definitely has to break the former high because maybe it'll double top, which it actually started to do. And so I was selling into this and the way that I phrased it, a lot of people have questions. I say, Gur, it keeps uptrending after hours, nearly hitting my goals. So I'm forced to take profits since there's no overnight risk. So this is what this guide, if you, if you want me to make this guide, we'll basically talk about where in my head, obviously I have the goal of making 25 to 50 cents a share. So some people are like, well, why don't you just wait for 25 cents a share? For me, it's a sliding scale, okay? If I make 24 cents a share or 20 or even 18 cents a share as it turned out, that's good enough to the bottom of my goal range to make me want to take it because when at the time I was selling, it could not break 265. Okay, in fact, actually, I, I sold it in here before it could even break 260. So I'm thinking this might double top at 265 and I can get out inside of an hour with no overnight risk. That's not what I wanted, but as I said, grr, the stock forced it on me based on its price action, thinking that it was going to double top at 265 and if it's gonna double top at 265, why hold overnight on speculative news why not just take your profits? So that's what I did. That is what I mean when I say it forced my hand. It's not because, oh, I'm looking to make 18 cents a share. Oh, I want to issue a buy alert and then sell inside an hour and have everyone say, oh, you just wanted to get out. It's because I'm looking at the risk reward. I know that this might sound complicated to you guys, but every single trade I'm trying to do properly based on risk reward and probability and odds and risk management and that's why i think this guide um, might be good because i can give you know hundreds of examples like this the reason why it spiked to the 320s um at around you know 5 15 p.m and by the way i wasn't even back at my computer i had to make it back to a dinner meeting um i just donated twenty five thousand dollars to this charity that builds schools in bali so I was actually meeting with the director. So I have a crazy fucked up schedule. Um, so even if I had somehow ignored risk reward, you know, it was it got up to 265, perfect double top. It came down to 250. Um, I was not going to sit around or, or be here to sell in the threes as some of you think. Some of you are like, oh, you should have sold in the threes. Yeah, well, that's easy if I have no life. But, you know, I'm freaking getting my dad gifts. I'm giving gifts in Bali, I'm trading, I'm traveling, I'm trying to do a lot of stuff. So give me a break, some of you guys in your emails being like, you should time things better. I'm trying to just fit in and trying to teach based on good trades and bad trades. And I want to show you that you can do this no matter what your schedule is. Because I have one of the craziest schedules you will ever hear about. And I'm still managing to trade and make a few hundred here or there. And it adds up over time as you can see. So why did it spike? right in here in the threes. Well, it's because of this news. Uh, where was it? I had it somewhere. Ah, this. So this was at 5.20 p.m. Uh, the FCC chairman is said to recommend approval um, of Global Star. And so that came out uh, 
you know, just after 5 p.m. And, you know, again, I didn't know this news was going to happen. I'm not specifically betting on the fact that they were going to get approval. I'm betting on the fact that since I know how short sellers think because, you know, I am one, guess what? I know when short sellers want to cover. And as I said, the volume was only $15 million. So even if every single one of those shares was a short covering, which it's not because, you know, half the shares are buys, half the shares are sells. So even if every single, you know, buyer was a short seller who was covering, we're talking about 7 million shorts covering. And it wasn't. There's normal buyers like me too. So probably maybe 3 or 4 million shares at most that were short out of the 53 million covered into this potentially damaging news for short sellers. So I like buying stocks with high degrees of short sellers with potentially monstrous, potentially hugely positive news. No different than an earnings winner with, uh, you know, a, a lot of shorts. If you remember back a few years ago, I bought ESI before it tripled and I sold that one too soon too. And I actually got a lot of hate for that one too. You know, I'm not trying to be there for the, the cataclysmic event where, you know, you have something really positive because it might be something negative too. I think ESI eventually failed. Let me see. Yeah, ESI eventually failed. But the key for buying stocks like ESI or GSAT, it was right here. And I was buying it in the fives and it went to 13 two days later. But it was already down so much and they had positive news and they had a ton of shorts. So that is why I buy. And it happens again and again and again. And a lot of you guys just don't know history and you don't study history. And so you're confused and you lash out based out of ignorance. And it's frustrating to me because, you know, I'm, I'm writing the history books. I'm, I'm making all of these videos and cataloging example after example after example. And I have the right mindset. I have the right perspective. I have the right patterns. But a lot of you guys don't, uh, especially those of you who were shorting GSAT and you got absolutely crushed. Any of you are free to bet against me uh, and, and totally ignore my rules or patterns or whatever you want. But I'm telling you that I have been studying this stuff for nearly two decades. So if I were you, I would just trust me. That's why I trade with such a small account because I'm that secure in my patterns and my catalysts and my rules. So it doesn't matter that I trade with a small account. I'm the only, you know, experienced trader who trades with a very small account. Did you ever think why? Some people are like, oh, it's because you can't trade. No, it's because I want to focus on teaching. It doesn't matter if I buy 2,000 shares of ESI or 20,000 or 200,000 shares. If I have too big of a position, then it's about ego and it's about trading profits, which it is for most people. For me, 2,000 shares is puny. The money that I made on this, not on ESI, on GSAT, you know, it doesn't matter. I lost money on the overall text message, but I get the lessons out. I get the teachings out. And guess what? You know, it turned out that I was on the right track. In fact, in my chat room, when I gave the buy alert, I think both uh, Mark Crook and uh, Michael Good both said, oh, I don't like it. I don't know what this news means. I didn't even know what this news means. Okay. I didn't know the technicalities of FCC approval or any of that. I knew that it spiked a shitload in reaction to this news and I saw how many shares were short and it's a simple mathematical formula here where there is way too many shorts in this stock and they're going to have to cover to try and protect themselves. And, you know, even now it's at 280. I don't know what happens on Monday, but this is a short squeeze. This whole thing is a short squeeze and this could go to $5 on Monday for all I know. I'm giving a whole virtual live trading day. So this would be a fantastic stock for me to trade. But I wanted to make this video lesson over the weekend so that you understand the catalyst and the reasoning and the rationale for my trades. Explaining trades, not just buying and selling and alerting the ticker and alerting the price and being like, good trade, bad trade based on your profits. That's bullshit. You don't learn anything. But by examining this, looking at the specific indicators, looking at the specific news, and thinking about the short sellers, thinking how other short sellers think, that is how you learn these patterns. That is how you can get ahead of the game. And using stocks to trade, you can beat other news services by a few minutes. It's all about gaining some kind of edge. 
okay? If you have a faster news service, if you understand these patterns faster than other people do, you have an edge. And I'm very proud of several students. Uh, let's see. Where was it? Oh, here's here's an email I got from Diego. This is a, he's a new challenge student, and he said, "Just wanted to let you know I've been busy with fits and development, and didn't follow up on the challenge. Stopped to the last video, learning to build my watch list. Started today. Followed on news on GSAT. Saw you getting out too early. In at 2:45, out at 3:16 after hours. Awesome job, Diego. That's a great trade. And then also Trina, uh, you know, she got in at 2:44 and out at 2:65 for a nice $200 profit." Good job, Trina. And don't feel bad if you sell too soon. You know, you couldn't predict that 5, 5.20 p.m. news. You got out and you thought that it was going to be a double top at 265, which is what the price action was telling you. Uh, so many more people. Um, I, I was just trying to copy and paste a few. This is not a full list. Uh, but look at this. Live Long 92 in the chat room. In MN, MGT at 105, out at 152. Uh, 3,000 shares. So I think he made like 1,500 bucks. Uh, Larshog, don't feel bad if you have a small account, $77 profit, that's fine. Uh, Siddharth uh, made some money on, on MGT. Uh, I like this, V Madness made $1,500 in two minutes. Getting Rich shorted, uh, like I did. Uh, the Bearded Trader was in at $0.98, cents, out at $140 and 2,000 shares. My $3,500 account is feeling it, finally hit my first goal. Um, and then he said, you know, can't thank you enough, man. I've been learning a lot recently. Uh, this was another one, made 1600 uh, This was Vincent. This was an email, I think, or comment. I don't know. I get comments everywhere. Uh, here's Mind Sculptor, uh, made some money on HLTH. Uh, OCHSZY, shorted MGT, nice for $1,200 profit, biggest gain for his account ever. Uh, Fabio did the trade shorting MGT before me. This is what I love seeing. Students recognizing the patterns and the setups and doing it before me. Never follow any alerts. Never. Never trust anyone's picks or research. You can only trust yourself. And that's why you need to be self-sufficient. None of my millionaire students follow my picks or piggyback my alerts, okay? In fact, they probably bet against them. A lot of the time, Tim Grittani is shorting morning spikes, and I like buying morning spikes. It's okay, okay? I don't get offended if someone goes against me. There are traders, you know, they think it's like the worst betrayal possible if you go against somebody. Like, I'm long this stock. How could you short it? Get over yourself, okay? You guys can trade however you want, but I will tell you right now that piggybacking alerts or following anybody's trades or any breaking news without a plan, without your own self-sufficiency will never make you rich. And that is a fact. And that is why I have the most millionaire students and I am damn proud of that because there's a lot of teachers and gurus and chat rooms and newsletters and websites out there that do it wrong. And their people don't realize it until it's too late and they lose 50 or 75% of their account and you never hear from them again. Rule number one for me, cut losses quickly. Tim Grittani actually was shorting MGT. Uh, if you follow him on Twitter, he had some good uh, comments about how he cut losses. Uh, here's Seth. Uh, you and I had the same plan. Your DVDs really rock. Was only in a few cents under. You made 120 bucks. Uh, here's Be More uh, shorted. Uh, MGT, be strong, shorted MGT. Beyond Trades actually dip bought MGT. That's good. Um, this is awesome from Loco Zoco. Thanks again for your training, Tim. Uh, watching your How to Make Millions DVD when the kids are sleeping. Grew my account 38% from 2300 to 3100 uh, in just basically the past month. Awesome job, Loco Zoco. Uh, Gelzinga uh, bought MGT at 77 cents, sold some uh, at 179 for. $1,500 profit. His $4,000 account is up 33% in the week. Thanks for the mentoring. Well, it's my pleasure. You know, I love seeing this. And I did not even buy MGT. I had a crazy week full of travel and schedules. That's my excuse. But also, I just don't trust this motherfucker, okay? I don't trust this new CEO. He reeks. He reeks. Even though KBIO went up for several weeks, you know, with Shkreli in charge, I have no doubt that he's going to try and pump up MGT even more. But will he succeed? Will, you know, his legs get chopped out from under him with some negative news and, you know, reality? Probably. So I'll continue looking at MGT as a potential short. Um, but if the, he wants to pump it and if you guys want to buy it, by all means, do it. But I am telling you right now, MGT is sketchy. 
and Sketchy almost always fails. Uh, here's Beal's, uh, BL wins it. Hey, Tim, I've been a subscriber to your service for a year. Just auto-renewed Penny Stocking Silver. Uh, I've been trading since 2000. I learned more in the past year than the previous 16 years. That's awesome. Um, oh, here's some of the, the GSAT trades. And I, I just got to give these details out so that you understand what traders and students of mine are doing to make it work. Uh, here's Teller, good trade, traded better than me on GSAT, you know, made like 800 bucks. Sean, uh, good job. He traded off price action, traded better than me. Nick uh, was in at 243 out of 260, similar trade to me. Uh, here's Lion Trader, first trade ever in MGT at 137 out at 177. Um, and he's been studying since the Vegas conference. We'll stay more consistent. Loves stocks to trade in the chat room. I'm glad, Lion Trader. Um, and here's more. Um, this was awesome. Uh, Tox, you know, in uh, GSAT at 245 out at 315. Uh, this I wanted to bring up because this is a Kashik trader. He's a newbie. He said, I was going to buy GSAT, but once again, I sat and did nothing like I do every day. Just sit and watch all the plays, starting to get frustrated, can't figure out what the problem is. I even tried just to buy 100 shares and I still freeze up. It's okay. God, you guys put so much pressure on yourselves to be perfect and to, you know, see what you can do every single day. Have patience, okay? GSAT was not a gimme by any means. You have to understand short selling. Ideally, you've seen my short stocking DVD, so you understand short squeezes, but the opportunity was there, so you just need to study more until you get more comfortable with the patterns. That's the key. And if you wanna buy 100 shares or if you wanna paper trade, Stocks to Trade is actually coming out with a new paper trading feature in the next few weeks. You guys are gonna love it. Um, Here's Ideal Piper. You know, I, I wasn't even in the chat room, so I, I had to go back to the archives, but you can read all the archives from the chat room here. Ideal Piper in at 243, out at three on GSAT. So making 60 cents a share, 30% gain. Uh, Mike in at 241, out at 315. Uh, Mally Pally in at 242, out at 325. Uh, ASA Blitz in at 244, sold at 330. $200 profit. $200 profit. Um, what, what, what are we talking here? Let's do the math here. Uh, 2.44 times 2.50. So they put in $600 and they came out with a $215 profit in, in like an hour or an hour and a half. That's freaking awesome. And it's not luck. It's not manipulation. It's not pumping. It's understanding what a motherfucking short squeeze is. And I have to swear to really piss off those of you who are narrow-minded or who get offended when I swear because I don't want you as my student. You're not worthy. The beauty of my being real is that I can swear and I get to choose my students. The beauty of being real in an industry full of fakes, frauds, scammers, liars, cheats, and trolls is that I get to choose who gets to learn my rules. I know that sounds cocky, I know it sounds bad, but I don't care, it's reality. I have thousands of people begging me every single day. If you get offended by anything I say, go unfollow me. Don't learn another thing. My feelings will not be hurt. I'm already overwhelmed as it is. But if you do want to learn, then understand why I trade. Understand why I teach and how I teach and why I have the most millionaire students. And I'm gonna keep repeating that so that it really gets inside your head because some of you don't really understand it. You think that I actually care about making your two, $200 or $300 or losing two or $300. It's to show you specifically in video lessons like this. I was planning on holding it over the weekend. I knew from the minute that I clicked the buy button that I was gonna make a video lesson and I was gonna talk about how to really take advantage of a short squeeze. I did not anticipate selling so soon. I did not anticipate you know, the price action that was gonna happen exactly. I got in because it was a former runner with huge volume. Oh, and I should mention, it's also a technical breakout. This was another thing that got me to buy. Technical breakout right over here at 220. So guess what? If you want to look, why did it bounce right here? Why did it stop here in the 220s? Because it's a multi-month technical breakout. Classic, classic technical breakout over 215, 216. 
I have no idea why some people are shorting this. Do not short technical breakouts with potentially gigantic news and huge short positions. And if you look at two years, it was also a nice breakout over here. Here was the, the actual breakout uh, from last November in the low 220s. And so when it bottomed in the 220s near the market close, that now acts as support. 220, 225, 230-ish. At worst, I'm going to lose 5, 10, 15 cents a share. And at best, I thought I could make 25 cents a share, maybe 50 cents a share. As it turned out, there was 90 cents a share of upside from my buy alert already. What it's going to do now, I don't know. I go in specifically for the initial short squeeze because a lot of shorts are not prepared, especially on a Friday afternoon. So as news begins to travel, did you hear about GSAT's news? Did you hear about the spike? Short sellers begin to shit in their pants. And that, guess what? That makes them want to buy to cover. And then when there's just a remark made that they might even get FCC approval, that pushes the stock up another 70 cents. So that is the trade with GSAT. I'm going to be doing a, a virtual trading um, day on Monday, all day. So I'm going to be pretty damn busy with that. Um, I, I think, I, I don't think we opened up anymore. I don't know. I, I got to check with my programmers. I think we were trying to open up like 10 more spots. If, if they did get it done, I'll, I'll post the link to get in there if you haven't already. But I think it's like 50-50. So I'll just add the link after this if, if, you, if you can. But don't, no promises. So don't, don't count on that. Um, but I'm really looking forward to those of you who are going to be in the virtual trading day. Uh, we're going to have a camera on me from 9 a.m till 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, so you're going to be able to see my screen, you're going to be able to see me. Um, it's going to be pretty sick, so I'm, I'm looking forward at this new tool um, that's going to teach people. And, you know, I'll still be looking at MGT. We got a few other stocks in play also, but GSAT was the play because of the setup, and I just wish that more of you guys would learn to recognize these setups as fast as I do. Um, and it'll happen in time. You know, the more you study these setups, uh, this is literally no different than ESI, uh, which was, you know, several years ago and that went on to triple. I don't know what GSAT is going to do, but I can't imagine that the 50 million shares that are still probably short are going to be feeling too good on Monday. So this might spike even more. Um, but you know, the easy money, uh, from the low twos to the high twos is already done. So that's, that's where the, the easy money was. Now it's kind of more of a guessing game. Um, so I have no position. I took my few hundred dollars in profits. I'm glad that some of you, you know, took profits. I'm glad that some of you, you know, held. I'm, I'm glad that all of you are at least learning. Um, because the more examples of stuff like this, you know, MGT was really the only volatile play of the past few days. Now this one came out of nowhere in the last hour of the trading day on Friday. So it's good, you know, with every new volatile play, with every new supernova, you learn. And, you know, you'll look back in a year or two and you'll say, oh, I remember GSAT. I remember this similar setup. And that's how you get good over time, just remembering similar setups. You know, the reason why I found ULTR and GLBS before they both, you know, tripled, I missed PRGN, but I, I nailed the, the sympathy plays, was because, as outlined in my How to Make Millions uh, DVD. It's all about sympathy plays when there's volume, when there's price action with these hot sectors. So whenever the next hot sector pops up, I don't know what it's going to be. People always ask me, but I'll tell you that I will be prepared to probably buy the sympathy plays and, you know, maybe a few days later, even short them too. So the patterns repeat, the catalysts repeat, the stocks change, but, you know, your preparation, it's up to you. And I know some of you guys don't want me ranting, but it's so key to have the right mindset. It's not just about buying good companies and short selling bad companies. You really have to understand the risk and goal setting and, you know, the risk of holding overnight. So if you almost hit your goals and you don't have to hold overnight, I mean, I'm almost always going to take those profits because I don't want to hold a speculative stock over the weekend. What if somebody comes out? over the weekend and says the FCC is going to deny this company. You know, this thing might reopen at $2 a share. So 
when you have the gains or most of the gains that you wanted and you don't have to risk it overnight, take it. Don't feel bad. Don't listen to any bullshit what somebody else says. You go in with the plan and if the stock nearly hits your goals, you take it. Uh, if you want to risk more, risk more. I'm always going to trade the safer option, not just for uh, me personally, but because I'm trying to you know, teach you good habits. Uh, I can't ever think of an opportunity where it's like, oh, I regret playing it too safely. Um, you know, we're in an industry where 90% of traders fail and a lot of people blow up and they lose all of their money. So safety first is not just optional for me. It's how I want to teach and it's how I want you guys to practice. And I know it's not much fun. I know you want to be degenerate gamblers like other chat rooms and newsletters and websites, but at the same time, there's a reason why my millionaire students still have their millions. And a lot of these other people, they might have some good wins here or there, but you stop hearing about them afterwards because they lose a lot because they're gamblers. Do not be a gambler. I don't mind selling GSAT too early. And I wanted to make this long ass video lesson to help you understand exactly why I sold so early. And it doesn't make a fucking difference if I make $200, $300, or $500 on the trade. I think it cost me about like $560 to send out text messages to students just for the alerts. So no matter what I do, I'm losing money on it. But it's okay because education is my primary focus. And as you can see with my account going from 12,000 to 42,000 in just over four months, I am on the right track even though my text messages probably wiped that out. But I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope that you're learning a lot from my small positions and overly safe trading. And hopefully, you know, I can get into that degenerate side of your brain and start chipping away at the stubbornness so that you learn to trade safer too. I'll see a lot of you guys in the virtual uh, trading floor tomorrow. The rest of you, I'll see you in the chat room. I'll still be giving alerts and, and I'll be in the chat room, but I'll be answering a lot of questions uh, live with my virtual uh, trading floor people uh, all day on Monday. So get excited. Have a good day, guys.